So in our final section mm -hmm. of this session, we're going to talk about developing a sincere desire to repent and forgive. Mm. So from our prior conversations, we can see that intention is crucial if we're actually going to engage forgiveness and repentance. Yes. Um, so this developing a sincere desire um, and intention to forgive and repent is going to be essential. Yes. And we know that God's laws measure intention and desire. Yes. And we know that forgiveness can only happen with sincere desire. Repentance can only happen with sincere desire. So the word desire keeps popping up <laughs> yes. all the time here. <laughs> yes. So how are we going to get sincere about this desire? Because anyone who's attempted to uh, forgive or repent um, because they feel they have to or because we've said it's a good idea or because, uh, well, we'll talk about in various ways that we can be insincere in this so-called desire. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll know that it doesn't work. So so we thought it was good, didn't we, just to actually talk about how we're going to get sincere about this whole process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So developing a sincere desire to forgive. Now, for our listeners, uh, we've actually spoken, we started to speak about this in our session yesterday. We did. And the specific, specific sections of mm. that session yeah. <laughs> where we talked about it <laughs> yeah. are entitled What It Feels Like As God's Laws Operate to Motivate Forgiveness. Yes. So you'll see I will have said that specific heading yeah. <laughs> in yesterday's presentation. That's right. And also in the future there'll be a clip entitled exactly that. Yes. So that will correspond with this part of our discussion. And the second area area we talked about it was when we spoke about speeding up the process of forgiveness. Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm. All right. So, but beyond that. So this is an information in addition to, that. to those particular principles we discussed yes. in those sections that you've mentioned. Yeah, mm. so it all works together. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But beyond the, those things we already mentioned, mm -hmm. what can help motivate me to develop an intention or a sincere desire to forgive? Yeah. Well, anybody who's listened to any of my presentations for any length of time would know that I've focused their attention on three primary things. Right. Mm. The first primary thing is humility. Yeah. Right. The second primary thing is truth. Yeah. Right. And the third primary thing is faith. Yeah. Now, of course, we also had to talk about desire. Yeah. And desire we mentioned in our last assistance group. That's yeah, very important. It's very much faith. Yeah. yeah. Faith about something being possible in the future causes us to develop a desire. So faith and desire are very much related to each other. Mm. So, so, so what we need to do is we go, okay, in order to you know, open my heart to the concept of forgiveness, I'm first going to have to learn to be truly humble. And mm. that means, and, and our definition of humility has always been being open to and desirous of feeling every single emotion, whether it's painful or pleasurable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if I'm truly humble, that's going to have a very, very good effect on my, my processes of forgiveness, obviously, because mm. mm. I'll be able to get to the point where I, I can recognize sin easily. Yeah. I can easily see that I have hurt inside of me, that I can easily feel I'm sensitive to it. I easily cry. Mm -hmm. I easily feel my other emotions such as fear, anger, shame, whatever it is. Yeah. Just like a child would easily feel those particular emotions. That's what being humble is all about. And also recognize that I'm being illogical when I am being illogical and recognize that I am doing something wrong when other people are getting harmed and it's pretty obvious that they're getting harmed and, mm -hmm. and being humble even to the operation of conscience which we raise in a few weeks time yeah that that is all a part of our condition of humility yeah so that's really important yeah the second thing which we mentioned obviously is this aspect of truth, truth. now now, if I am resistive to the concept of absolute truth, mm -hmm. that God has absolute truth, and that, that, and that that absolute truth is available to me, mm -hmm. 
then I will be very, very resistive to the to any form of forgiveness or repentance for any act I've ever taken. I will even be resistant to the concept that there is such a thing as sin. Yeah. So I'm, if I'm resistive to the absolute truth, I'm resistive to the concept of sin, and I'm resistive to uh, the laws the that govern it. The laws that govern it, and mm -hmm. therefore I'm not going to be able. I'm not sincere. I'm not going to be able to be sincere even. No, not, it's not even going to, to be forgive. possible. Yeah. I'm not even going to engage the processes of forgiveness and repentance yeah. because I don't even believe it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it's true. I don't even think the pos it's possible to be true. Yes. Even. Yeah. And I don't even believe that God does have laws and that God does, uh, that there is such a thing as sin and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Of course, if I don't believe any of those things, then I will never engage the process of forgiving somebody for their sin or being repentant for my own. Yeah. So truth is going to have a large effect on my life there. Mm -hmm. Faith is a, is a third one we mentioned, which is also mixed with desire. Yeah. Right. Faith generates desire. Mm -hmm. So before you can have a desire to repent, you or must or have forgive. Or forgive. forgive yeah. In this case, we're talking about forgiveness. But yeah. before you have a desire to forgive, you must have faith that forgiveness works. Mm. You must have faith that forgiving will benefit mm -hmm. you and others. Mm -hmm. You must have faith that it's going to help your life. Mm -hmm. You must have faith that it's actually something God likes you to do, wants you to do. Mm -hmm. You've got to have faith in a number of different areas before you'll do it. Mm -hmm. If you do have faith, that will generate the desire. Yes. But if you don't, you're not going to have a desire. No. Right? So the question is, how can we generate a developer's sincere desire to forgive? Yep. We have to go back to the basics. Yes. Humility, truth, faith, and a desire to love. Yeah. So, and if we find that, as you've said, we are resistive to the concept of absolute truth, we, we're struggling with humility, we don't have any faith, then we need to work on all the things that are opposing us in those three, three or four areas. Yeah, look, we'll look at our resistance yep. and release any emotion that yep. causes this resistance. And in our first assistance group in 2016, you spent the entire group basically assisting people to see how you can work on those areas, didn't you? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And in the second assistance group, we focused on all of the hardships of that, you know, yes. what it feels like, you know, with yep. the addictions the and, the and the personal processes that and I'll all need that. to engage. Yeah. And that should also help us yes. because that is all truth too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So working on all those areas, they're all the things that we can do to help t us to develop uh, an intention or a sincere desire to forgive. Yep. Yes. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And and remember that all of our refusal to forgive and all of our intentions to not forgive all do resolve, revolve essentially yep. around those four things. Around our resistances to those things, that's going to create a refusal to forgive. If we work on those things, we're going to automatically start to grow in yeah. our desire, in our faith, about forgiveness which is going to lead us down that track yes yeah. if yeah. we want love in our lives if we want to be humble if we want truth in our lives if we have faith mm -hmm. that the, there are going to be rewards and benefits for engaging those particular processes then our resistance will melt away yeah it it's will great hey yeah. yeah so so again all we really need to do is concentrate on those four basic things mm -hmm. And, and while it's important, while we, you know, we're having these conversations to give people more information, yep. at the end of the day, the real information they should have been applying at this, uh, up to this point is just those four things. Because if they did, they would already be in a state of repentance or forgiveness, yep. depending on what's happened. Yep. Uh, already, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they'd already know what the processes are if they had engaged those four things truthfully and honestly sincerely with longing yes right. and and um i can certainly see for myself that focusing on those four areas now makes me as i'm preparing this material and discussing this material with you very soft to these concepts as opposed to how i was uh five years ago three years ago when I was in total opposition to those four principles and those four aspects of 
my relationship with myself and with God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So definitely I can attest to that. Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we needed to go back to those basics. Yes. Remember the basics. Yeah. Those basic principles, if you apply them sincerely with longing, they will get you through all of these processes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? It's sort of like you can focus on the primary things and that as long as you get the base of God's way, you it's almost like you don't need further instruction because not really following the way is educational and gives you the instruction as you go yes and obviously you know we're giving this extra education mm -hmm. in order to alleviate most of the resistances yes it helps with all of that doesn't it, it does yeah. and it yeah. also develops some faith having more knowledge develops a bit more faith and yep. so forth and more truth we see the importance of things better so it's not, it's not of no benefit, mm -hmm. but if we had been truly and sincerely focusing on developing those four things, we probably wouldn't need it now. Mm. So if we find after seven, eight years of listening for many people that, that they still haven't really engaged these processes of forgiveness or repentance or even understand them, mm -hmm. and a lot of the information we've already discussed, let alone what we're going to discuss, is new to them, mm -hmm. then I suggest it's because they haven't engaged the four basic things yeah. sincerely. Yeah. Because if they had have, they would have been educated directly by God about all these other matters. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And our intention to forgive, we're going to talk also about, more about that when we get to the letters, also from the listeners, mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. talk about what it motivates either uh, an intention to resist forgiveness and... Exactly. And so we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Yeah.